The greatest power you possess is your ability to choose. Join Lowe's more as he reveals how you can begin to maximize that power by exploring yourself on the deepest levels and committing to making lasting and positive changes. Get ready to achieve breakthroughs that will lead to accelerated growth and transformation because you are now tuned in to The Blueprint. Good evening, this is Lowe's Moore and welcome to The Blueprint. I have sitting next to me is my beautiful wife, Patrice Moore, and we are hosting this very special Blueprint uh mother's day special and you know this is just awesome we, we, we're gonna get to that later it's just this is this is just gonna be awesome tonight and you know i just want to start out with so we me i can get right into it um i'm gonna start out with the book of the week let me just jump right into it oh yeah i think this was one of my top five books because last week i think i had four or five books on there we were addressing the issue of uh, how to build or uh, how, how to build a, a wealth mindset and or how to create or build a wealth mindset, which is which is awesome. And I had a number of book and this is this is one of my favorite books. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about faith and the marketplace on this special Mother's Day uh, blueprint. But uh, we right now we're going to focus on our word of the week. Yeah, many many of us will look back there. You see right behind there, you see all those beautiful fruits. If your fruit, if you go to, to the supermarket or wherever you pick up your fruit, and your fruit looks like that, man, that's some good fruit. Um, I, I think it's just very powerful. You know, most of us, when we hear fruit, right, we, we hear it to the, the place of, um, just fruit, the fruit that you eat, an apple, an orange, pears, but but the Bible talks about fruit differently, right? It talks about fruit as being productive um, and 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 high performance and and uh, and and so fruit is different, you know, and it's scripture that says we bear we should bear good fruit, right? Now it didn't say when it said good fruit, it didn't say like, here's an apple, here's an orange, and here's a pear, but no, it says be productive, be excellent, right? And and I, lo I love that word fruit. And, you know, the question is in your life, will your, will your life bear fruit? Will you be fruitful in your life? And, you know, and that's just awesome, awesome word, man. So many words on we come up with on, you know, throughout the, you know, the show, you know, we put a lot of thought into those words because words are powerful. And, you know, and, and I say that every week that is important to learn a new word every week, try to come up and learn a new word and, and, and speak that word and uh, get the definition of that word and say it over and over and over again, because, because that word will become your word. And then next is our affirmation or quote. In this case, this is a scripture. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And against such, there is no law. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, kindness. Hmm? and kindness. Awesome. You know, awesome. And you, you know, really, uh, it just asks us to bear fruit and, and bear fruit. And there's love. And then there, there's the attributes of love, which is shown in this scripture here. And it just, just awesome situation. So, you know, right now, I just want to you know, pay. I got a highlight for you. This is our Mother's Day special. We got a quick highlight um, for all the moms out there, especially my wife. I'm gonna give her. A, I got a Mother's Day card here. I'm gonna hand it over to her, and and let's let's check out this highlight. You know, this video right now.
awesome. Awesome. So happy Mother's Day, Bay. Thank you. Thank you for my you know, Happy Mother's Day to my mom and to all the mothers out there. And uh, my wife was uh, sharing a message this morning and she was talking about those who give birth um, to children and those who mother children without giving birth to them. And we salute all of you because we know how tough it is uh, to raise kids and nurture kids. And um, my wife had four kids. I, I want to pay homage to her for and I'm not that's not counting the other ones that we helped to raise as well. So, you know, as we hey, yeah, you're going to see some pictures as 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 we go along. This is our time. This is my time to, you know, to kind of salute my wife and on the marvelous job that she's done with with our kids, um, you know, and and she's been a tremendous mother. You know, she's been awesome. Right. And, you know. I mean, I don't I don't have man, man, I don't have any real words, man, that can explain the kind of um, number one wife and mother that my wife is. And and she's just been awesome, man. It's just been amazing to see her see her uh, with our kids and and the things. Even now, I'm, I'm, you know, my wife will give up everything, you know, for our kids. I mean, you know, and and it's just some, you know, she's just been awesome, man. She's an awesome mom, man. And she, you know, hey, let me tell you something. You know, I don't know my, you know, sometimes, you, you know, she, I think our kids think it's like a little, she irritates them sometimes because she just wants to do so much for them, man. And, you know, if they, if they got a problem, she want to fix it, right? If they say something you know, to her about doing something, she wants to help them out. I mean, it, it's just, it's just automatic, you know, uh, they say something and she's ready to jump right in and, and, and do it. And I'm like, man, just awesome, man. And, you know, she's been supportive of everything that they've done. Awesome. There's <laughs> Keith, my man, Keith way down in South Carolina. And then before that, we had somebody else on, uh, yeah, Keith was Keith was saying, "Yeah, he raised my kids too." Yes, she did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were down in South Carolina a couple of weeks ago, man, and we were over there at Keith's house. Keith's daughter's, and house. Keith's daughter's house. Keith's daughter's house. Woo, my what a house! God, my God, sister. Yeah, yeah, what a house, Van. What's up, man? You your know, cousin, happy. She, that's your cousin Van. Yeah, she, man. She. Yeah, man, Van was. Let, hey, I'm just telling you, man, we were just going to, I'm just going to keep, you know, they said give her flowers. I didn't give her any flowers because she would kill them, but I'm going to give her verbal flowers. You know, she's going to look at, I, I give her some flowers. I give her some flowers. She's going to look at the flowers. You're going to like, oh my God, those are beautiful. Right. And then that's it. You know. <laughs> that's it for those flowers, man. So we but but you know what? I ain't gotta worry about that with our kids, man. I think I got we got some more pictures up there. I want to show some more pictures, man. Just just awesome. We we had some awesome time, man. And that's the whole family. Well, no, they, that's not everybody. Because Jamal's in because there go Jamal right there. We missing Jamal, we missing Joy, we missing Omar. You're gonna see in a couple of pictures. Oh, there, there's Lozy. Michelle, Sherelle, Isaiah. Yeah, we were dressed to kill that day, boy. You know, just just awesome, man. What do you think, babe? Yeah, things are good. And that's with Jamal. Uh, he's our other baby. Yeah. <laughs> he's ours now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, um, mother and girls, daughters, yeah. They look like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good uh, thing. That's a good that's thing. That's my prince. <laughs> Lord knows. My baby, wow. California. Ah, um, college grad, Sherelle graduating from college. I think Fair we have University. We have pictures of like that with her from elementary all the way through to college. Yeah. I think we have elementary, junior high, high school, and college. Wow, Isaiah, what's up, man? Yo, isn't this this is awesome, man? You, I get to pay tribute to my my wife and the and the and the, it's not. I'm not going to say job, you know. Although it's work sometimes, but just the awesome uh, 
fruit of the spirit, one of his kindness, right? Yeah. And gentleness. She's bearing fruit, man. I'm I'm telling you, man. You, you, hey, you know whether or not you're bearing fruit based on your kids, right? If your kids are fruitful, you know that you have been fruitful, right? And and this is this is ooh, just awesome, man. We so. Oh, I remember that. I was coaching her, and she would she had, think she had just fouled out, and I was trying to, you know, I was trying to give her a hug, and she was not a happy camper. Mm -hmm. But she smiled. Some that's what that was in the newspaper, I think. Yeah. You know, um, she was an amazing young lady to coach. Uh, that uh -huh. was that was just before my mom passed away, and she knew I was struggling, and she came and just laid on top of me as I was crying, just to comfort me. Yeah, that was my rally. I was so exhausted that day. I think that was like two days before my mom passed. Wow. Some yeah. awesome pictures, man. Let me let me tell you, I'm I wanna say pay uh homage to my mom. Yeah, yeah, Queen. she just she just went home. Uh you just yeah. Uh, yeah, right there. And man, you have you know her four kids. I, I picked out a couple of pictures of us yeah man that's the gang right there man <laughs> <laughs> i know your brothers and sister were cute oh right <laughs> man look at that look at you oh the man tall one yeah i'm the big one back big there man <laughs> <laughs> doug looked like uh riley yeah it does <laughs> look like so riley <laughs> and tracy she was always cute yeah we were protective of our sister I think we got one more like that, man. We we the gangsters, man. We, my mom used to dress us, you know, just awesome, you know. We got one more. I think we got one more where we are. We are dressed up. Yeah. yeah. If not, we'll get to it later. But um, yeah. And then we want to pay the homage and we want to salute Teresa's mom too as well. You know, definitely we want to salute her, man. We miss her. We miss me, ma. Yeah, um, and and I I want Trees to tell a couple of you know, and me, ma, rest in peace. You know, we love you. We miss you. You were awesome, man. Whitley Gilbert. That's who. That's who, that's who you were. Oh, that's the my whole sweet. And, my sweet. Yeah, and my yeah. sister, my mom. Robin, Robin's yeah. now a mother. Nisha's Robin's now a mother. mother. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day to the two of them. Yeah, awesome, Dee Dee. Happy Mother's Day, right? Everybody grown, almost. Everybody grown in that picture. The only person missing that picture is Kalila, and the funny thing is, there's another picture, and we don't have it here. But Kalila photoshopped herself in the picture. <laughs> she should have gave me that she one. Said, I'm missing, but she's there's eight boobaloos, and well, actually, in this boobaloo, you in this group, you're missing Calvin and his boys. Yeah, but yeah. out of Robin's family, Kalila's missing. Yeah. So, hey, uh, so Bay, tell us a quick story about your your uh, mom. No. So you you you've been saying all week, but you got to tell these stories. People got to hear these stories right here, uh, right? So, yeah, tell tell both stories. Uh, yeah. So I got Keith on, and, you know, and the you know always the story that that Keith will remember. And I didn't tell this story today, but um, I know one time my brother, my mother was chasing my brother upstairs and <laughs> my mother couldn't stand the sight of blood. And I remember one time um, she was chasing my brother upstairs and he had those bedroom with the ladder that would pull down and he pulled the ladder up. And when he pulled the ladder up, it cut my mother's hand and my mother couldn't see blood. So what she did was she squeezed her finger and she said, I, I, and I think she was going to say, I think I'm going to faint. I was really <laughs> athletic. I jumped down all flights of stairs knocked on Keith's door and Keith was Dee Dee had to catch it <laughs> you know because my mother couldn't stand the sight of blood but my mom did so many things that make us you know that 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 <laughs> made us laugh and not that that made us laugh but I was always the worst I you know I was telling them today that the Bible says honor your mother and father and all on your days on this earth will be long I don't know how I'm still here <laughs> because there were things that happened to my mother that instead of me honoring her and taking care of her I busted out laughing I was terrible, um, you know, when it comes down to that. And my sister's already saying, Patrice Wallace Moore, don't do it. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> Happy Mother Day, Dee Dee. But, um, but the story that I told today and yesterday was that, 
you know, there was one time my mother went to the car wash and she is kind of claustrophobic. So while she, they, she was, this is a car wash that you're inside. And while she was inside the car wash, um, she uh, hit the brake and the people were trying to get her to take a foot off the brake. So she didn't understand what they were saying. So she rolled the window down while she was in the car wash and the soap and the, and the things came in and started hitting her in the face. And she <laughs> panicked and was screaming. They had to cut the car wash down and go in there and rescue her. And she came home. She, she was all wet in the face and she was telling us about it. And all I could do was laugh. I had no mercy. I'm terrible. I'm a terrible child. Right. I don't understand how I lived this long. But the things that my mother did, you know, I, I shared the story today about how one time she was brushing her teeth and she was, I was walking past and she started screaming and I was like, what's going on? And I looked down and instead of brushing her teeth with toothpaste, she brushed her teeth with Bengay. <laughs> so her mouth was on fire. And and instead, and, and then Didi, I don't know if, she, if I called Didi or Didi was on the phone and Didi's like, call 911. And I just couldn't stop laughing. I mean, 911 is three numbers, but I was laughing so hard. I couldn't even, I was laying on the floor and Didi called 911 and they called back. I was still laughing. Yeah. It's terrible. I'm just a terrible child. I don't know how I lived this long. And I, I think I was there too, because oh. I came downstairs and I uh, I was like, man, I, I remember you saying, uh, me, mom, you know, uh, kiss my knee because my, my, my kiss my shoulder because because my shoulder hurt, kiss my knee because my knee hurt. <laughs> but uh, I love, I mean, she um, she was so smart. My mom, of course, I always talk about she went to HBCU, Spelman College and, and Columbia University for a grad school and it was just an amazing social worker, amazing woman. I miss my mom. I wanted to go lay flowers yesterday. But um, I was tired and I said, you know, my mom would have wanted me to rest. And so that's what I did. And then I didn't rest because I went over and helped our <laughs> daughter, you know, um, and, and son-in-law. Congratulations to Michelle and Dakari on, on their new home. They just moved in. and Yeah, we're, awesome. You know, so congratulations to them. Yeah. Oh, Didi said not to call 911. She said to call poison control. Like I was going to know the number <laughs> of poison control. I didn't know no number because I was laughing too hard. I wouldn't have been able to see it. So that's why Didi <laughs> called for me. But truly, um, you know, I love my mom and I told them today that my mom gave me a lot of com comedic material, you know, and I'm sure that I'm giving my kids a lot of comedic material because <laughs> I've done some, some, some crazy things <laughs> over my days. But I miss her. Uh, I, I love the tributes that you made. And I want to say thank you for my card and thank you for dinner and breakfast and everything that you did for me today and just being the amazing husband that you've been for these 37 and a half uh, years, or actually a little bit more. And so um, I'm just grateful to you. And um, I love our children. I, I'm just, yeah. I, you know, my, my message today in church was um, the birth of a generation subtitled, I am her. And the her part says her children will rise up and call her blessed. And I believe that I am her. And so when we think about it, you know, each of us, um, when when our children, you know, um, love us and, and really pay homage to us too, you are a blessing. And so I know I am her. I know that that's how my kids feel, um, you know, and I'm blessed because I am their mother. And I'm so proud of Jamal and Omar and Michelle, Sherelle, Lozi and Isaiah. I'm, I'm proud of all of them and, you know, each and every day. And for those of you who don't, you know, don't know Omar, you know, came into our lives when he was 12. Mm -hmm. And um, his mom, Claudette, let us borrow him <laughs> as her as our son. And so I'm always grateful that she allowed us to borrow him as as our other son. And he's been part of our family. I know all of our family love O uh, and the kids, you know, love O as their brother. And Jamal uh, was our godchild. So we've been in his life since you know, the, the day he was born, practically. And um, he's been living with us in here, here in my Vernon with us over 10 years now, I think 11 mm -hmm. years now. That's right. And, and he is ours. And so I, I've got bonus children. And then I've, we've got other children that, you know, call us mom, Chelsea and Lentz and, and uh, just Becky and all of those other kids, um, you know, <laughs> Courtney, you know, uh, there's so many. So I'm so excited. <laughs> no. So truly oh. God is good. Uh, Dee Dee's playing, not fair. <laughs> So I give you comedic material. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dee Dee's Didi, giving a little bit there. Like when, um, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but my wife was scared of spiders, right? So we're, we're leaving Dee Dee's house, my, you know, tree sister. 
and our sister and and putting the kid put the kids in the car. You know, I'm about to get in the car. She she's in the car. I'm coming to get in the car, and all of a sudden, I hear her screaming. Ah! She's screaming. She jumps out the car, right? And and the kids are in the car, and the car is driving back because she back out into the street because she's seen the spider in the car. I mean, like, okay, man. I'm like, what in the world are you, you, you doing? You telling something that could cause me to be having CPS called on me. <laughs> <laughs> but I jumped in the car and saved my kids before yeah. the car went into the street. But that spider was scared to death. He was stuck to the top of the window like, what is this crazy lady doing? Yeah, you know? but I don't know if that punchline worked. Yeah, no. You no. jumped in the car and saved it. You I, know, I uh, did. I, I jumped in the car. I, I was we, holding Yeah, on you to did. It. After you, you, you tried to figure out that, oh my God, I, forget the spider. Let me get the kids. <laughs> 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 oh my God. <laughs> so, uh, you know, let, let, I, I want to, yeah, uh, you know, another tribute. We want to salute some other um, mothers as well, including mine and Tree's mom. Yeah, there, there's um, my aunt, my mother, my aunt Dolores, my aunt, my aunt Joyce, and and Teresa's mom Shirley. Awesome man, awesome, you know, awesome women of God. And these are Teresa's aunt. You got Aunt Joan, um, Aunt, aunt at Elaine the top, at the top, Aunt Elaine and Aunt Joan, aunt, and at the bottom is Aunt Roz aunt, and uh, um, then my sister-in-law Pat. Pat, and then TT, my niece, is right there in the middle. Happy day, happy Mother's Day to you guys, man! Awesome women, and boy, we got a lot of them here, man. Uh, Tracy, Angie, Juan, Shalik, who passed away. My oldest sister who passed, who passed away. Y'all rest in peace, man. Uh, Lakeisha, there go Michelle, Dee Dee, Robin, Janessa, Gwen, Joy, uh, Reese, Carla, Joya, Dacia, and of course my wife. Please, happy Mother's Day to you all. Let me say this to all of you guys out there, man. Um, you know, appreciate appreciate your mom. I mean, all of them. If your sister's a mom. I appreciate all of them, man. If it's there was awesome. one person that was missing out of that picture, and I'm sure I didn't tell you ahead of time, but we want to also say Happy Mother's Day to Aunt Penny, and that's Lois's father's sister. Yes, she's uh, in her 80s, and uh, you know, and she's the only aunt that was missing out of that group up there. But she's a, an amazing woman as well, yeah. with a lot of kids and a lot of grandkids. Yeah, definitely, without a <laughs> doubt. <laughs> so she's an awesome mother. Yeah, we just wanted to. This is a just Mother's Days are just special not father's days are special too but mother's days are special um you know i always tell you my mom is my hero i can understand uh, why yeah yeah she raised four kids she man. made us some cake today man so for all the rest well, of the jealous people out there we got some lemon cake and some coffee cake yeah know? patrice and i know that steve which is a uh, sherelle's um yeah fiance he 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 just flew back was flying back to North Carolina. He got a piece of cake and, you know, everybody got a piece of cake, but what they didn't get. Peanut butter pie. <laughs> yeah, I got the birthday. Listen, I'm going to do a birthday shout out. My, you know, I got to do this birthday shout out, right, man? Lozy, Lowe's the third, and myself. Lowe's was born on May the 4th. I was born on May the 5th. And and uh, I was at you know right there, and you know it wasn't my idea. It was Patrice's idea. She said, "Babe, we're gonna have a son," and we already had two girls. We're gonna have a son, and all of and 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 he's gonna be born on your birthday. And I was like, "What?" And, you know, first of all, I was thinking like, "Man, there's a possibility that I could end up in the house with four women." So, I mean, <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, like three women, right? It would have been three women, right? And I'm in, in that house. And I was like, I don't know if we, we want to do this or not. And, and of course, we did. And we ended up, we realized we were going to have a little boy. And I, he was going to, she was like determined that he was going to be born on my birthday. And we got right to May 4th. And it was like 10 
o'clock okay. at night, mm -hmm. 10, 10 30 at night. And I'm like, hey, you got like an hour and a half to go. No, it was nine when that happened. At nine, they said um, the lady, the nurse said, I'm probably going to be going off shift at midnight. So you'll probably have this baby in um in about, you know, in tomorrow morning. And I said, No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she did. I said, I, I was like, you don't know my wife. Um, you know. And and I was like, babe, you only got like a, you know like an hour and some change, and she gave me this crazy look. I don't, I can't even explain. You know, if you ever, if you have your wife, you know, giving birth, right? She, they just make crazy faces, and I was like, man, she made this face at me, like, man, if this baby don't come out of here now, it's you gonna have a problem, you know? And I was like, wow, okay. And I was like, babe, just do your thing. You know, whatever you got to do, do your thing. And so he was born on May the 4th. And, you know, I was, bo I was born on May the 5th. So happy birthday to you yeah, and to Lozy. Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was all good. You know, we, we made it another, you know, an, another year, man. And he's out in California doing his thing, acting and, you know, just being awesome, man. He's actually should be filming, right? He's yeah, filming, he's filming right now. Filming the next two or three days, and uh, yeah, you know, hopefully one day, you know, I'm gonna look on the screen, and there he'll be, and then we'll be like, "Whoa, that's exciting! Doing something you dreamed about." Yes. You know, so yeah, this this awesome, and uh, so again, I want to say Happy Mother's Day to every mother, everywhere. Happy Mother's Day. And this is my shout out to you, man. God bless you, man. You guys are heroes. And, um, you know, you are heroes, you know, and uh, this, this is this is awesome. Uh, the Andalurus, she's watching. Happy Mother's Day, Andalurus. Now, if you guys got any questions, remember, this is interactive. If you've got any questions, uh, don't hesitate to, to ask. And we're going to have a couple of pop up guests tonight. And we're not, we're not just going to salute um, mothers, but we're also going to get into a conversation about uh, creating a wealth mindset. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the mission in the marketplace, but we got to hear about our uh, pop up. Yes, we want to hear about their moms first, man. And we're going to jump right in there. So, yeah, while we are celebrating moms, we should always be ready to learn something as well because we should leave a legacy, right? We should be in legacy mode. We, like, what was, what was your topic tonight? Well, the, I, today? Um, the birth of a generation, subtitle, I am her. I'm her, I'm her. Birth, I am her, birth of a generation. Which, I am her. Yeah, I am her, which is, which is important, which when you say a birth of, of a generation, that means that to come, something is going to come the same as legacy mode right and you know i want to leave something for my children's children's children you know and and we need to be more focused on creating a wealth and building a wealth mindset right and wealth can come in seven spheres and you know dealing with spiritual you got to have spiritual wealth Right. You got to have intellectual wealth. You got to have physical wealth. You got to have social wealth. Right. You got influential wealth. Right. Community wealth. Right. There are different aspects of wealth. And we're going to talk a little bit about that later, but we will go back to the most. We want to. Our pastor Woody is coming on. Yes, that's my sister. Pastor Woody. Yeah. <laughs> there she is. Uh, hey, Queen. Hi, gorgeous. Hi, favor. How are you? <laughs> hey, I, I heard you. You know, was it was about three weeks ago, right? Yeah. Well, when she preached at Emmanuel. Yeah, that was. Ooh, that fire. That yeah, day. yeah. That, you, you were awesome. Oh, my God. I, you know, I don't know how you. You know, you was. I don't know if you were sitting there, but wherever you were sitting, you was like, that's a tough thing to do, to preach, and sit in a chair. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, it, and 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 I don't know if anybody was in the room with you, but you by yourself, you know, giving the word, 
it's a, it's a weird experience. I know that much. <laughs> And sometimes I got that my right hand. hand. My sister is always near me. <laughs> okay, so weird. Near me. You know, and and you did a you did an excellent job. So, so God, we thank you, my brother. I absolutely love you guys. I absolutely love you guys. I named your wife Favor a long time ago uh, for the favor of God that is on her life, the wealth of God's glory that sits on her, first of all, and then just, you know, who God is for her. It is absolutely amazing. And so I am, I salute her. I absolutely salute this awesome woman of God. Amen. And I'm just honored to be here with you guys. It's, it's an honor. Listen, first of all, I didn't know what I was walking into. I didn't know what was expected of me. And I first came on real churchy looking. And then I saw y'all. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> all the way up. Let me change my clothes. <laughs> I, was, I was churched up, girls. I, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, it, it was okay if you had your Mother's Day outfit on. <laughs> Now, listen, I got a special outfit on just for this. <laughs> I, was, I was ready. I was like, I don't know what this is. I, I don't know what this is about, but let me get myself together. I ran in the house. I'm like, okay, let me let me get my church gear on. And then I turned on face. I said, this a whole dress down thing. Because <laughs> I'm enough. <laughs> we keep it real. We keep it real. <laughs> But it is like I have another outfit, but because I have a green screen behind me, when I had, when I put it on, everything on my whole outfit turned black and I blended into the chair. So I had to grab another shirt real quickly to put on top. So. And it and it only happens to her because we when when we first started, we had a blue screen. Right? Wow. And and we did a first couple of shows we did together and here she comes with a blue jacket on. She just disappeared right in the, in the picture. <laughs> yeah. I can believe it. Yeah, so. I can believe it. Happy Mother's Day, Queen. I salute you. Let me start there. I salute you. You are phenomenal. You are you your and your daughters. I honor you. I honor you for who you are in this kingdom. I honor your wound for carrying natural children as well as spiritual children. I salute you. And I thank God for everything that you are birthing in the land. Thank you. Thank you, my big brother, for being the seed that gives life. Thank you. Thank you. I salute you. Yeah, and that's a good segue right into the importance of mothers. You know, talk a little bit about your mother. I know you, you guys had some. Oh my God. My mom is an absolute warrior. My mom is strength. My mom is, um, she's power. My mom is power. All my life, I've seen my mom fight through life and struggles within itself. I have never seen my mom sick. I've seen my mom get a headache, you know, or something like that. Um, but I've never saw my mom sick. Like as long as I can remember, she's never been in a hospital. Um, she's gone to the hospital maybe to have some tests run for like sleep apnea or something. But um, last year, this time, my mom was actually in the hospital. Um, last week, she celebrated her birthday. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy birthday. Hallelujah. And um, last year was a scare for me um, because my mom was struck with COVID. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, myself going through that, and, and I'm not even going to talk about me today. I'm just going to talk about the strength of my mother um, because it's Mother's Day. Um, I saw this lady when I came home and found out that my mom was in the hospital and they told me that my mom was on a ventilator. The first thought that went to my head was like, what do you mean a ventilator? Um, you know, I, I've often heard that they say people that have borderline health issues normally get on ventilators, which should have been me um, because, you know, with chronic asthma, I should have been that person. But thanks be unto God, I wasn't. But to hear my mom was on a ventilator, it was like puzzling to me. But I didn't really get the time to have to be puzzled because I had to get in the floor and pray. And my mom... Um, my brother told me that, you know, on the onset of her going to the hospital when he called for the ambulance, um, that my mom was so weak, she couldn't even get outside her door. 
that she was like literally so weak, but yet the ambulance made my mom walk out to the ambulance truck. Wow. As weak as she was, and my brother says she was like fragile, like she just couldn't do it. And by the time they got her to the ER, first of all, she's a veteran's wife, so she was supposed to go to a VA hospital, but they took her to a different hospital. Mm-hmm. And when they get her there, um, the doctor said my mom has a twenty percent, less than twenty percent chance to live. Mm-hmm. Um, I thank God that God is God, and 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 man doesn't have the final say. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was so. Uh, bad off in her breathing and everything that on April the 1st, um, when she went into the house, they into the hospital, they put her on a ventilator on April the 2nd. And my mom was on that ventilator for 24 days. And the hospital where we live, um, people of her age group were dying less than five days in the hospital. I got this report from the nurses, this one nurse named Shazam. And he was like, listen, your mom, is is a trooper because people that have come here did not make it. But my mom was on this ventilator for 24 days, mm. 24 days. And I remember I called every single day, every day I was on that phone checking on my mom. And I remember, you know, listening to the doctors and then they started telling me, you know, that her kidneys was failing and they were going to have to, you know, give her dialysis and all of this stuff. And, And I just began to continue to pray. And I said, what my mom came in there with is what she's leaving with. And that's her health. I said, my mom is not getting no holes in her throat. She's not going to be getting no holes put in her body. I refuse to accept it or believe it. And I just began to pray hard. I spent many nights on the floor of my bedroom just in prayer for my mother. And so, you know, her being there, it was like, God, only you can do this. And I'm trusting you to bring her through it. I'm standing on Psalms 91. I know that you're able I'm dwelling in a secret place with you. So I know you got to hear my prayers. And God allowed my family to bombard the heavens. He allowed the church to bombard the heavens. Um, So many people from Bermuda and all different countries was in prayer fighting for my mom. And while she was going through all of that, they kept trying to tell me different things. Then it was something with her heart. And, and I'm like, no, no, like my mom is a healthy person. The most that happens to her is sometimes her blood pressure gets a little out of whack, but nothing to the degree of which they were trying to give her. But I thank my God that after 24 days, her birthday was last week, as I said, but she was in that hospital on her birthday. But this year she home. Right. Yeah, I like that. She was home celebrating with her family. And um, you know, she ended up in the nursing home and she did not want to go. Let me just tell (laughs) y'all. My mother said, I'm not old and ain't going to nursing home. But she was like adamant. And I'm like, well, mom, you know, you gotta learn to walk. She had to learn how to walk again. You know, she had went through so much in that hospital. They weren't taking proper care of her. My mom's body was breaking down. You know, I'm sure she don't mind me sharing it because it's only to God that she's alive, she's healed, and everything is restored back to its full function. Somebody better say amen. amen. And so, um, you know, she had breakdown bed sores and all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, she too young, mm-hmm. you know? And so having to go to this nursing home and with me as her daughter, oh, I was called in the hospital. We're going to have a war breakdown fight. And they got so tired of saying, hearing me that the doctors started calling me. <laughs> they was calling my phone. Uh, we just want to give you an update on your mom. Everything is looking good. You know, we're going to try to bring her out of the coma, t- the coma state. And, you know, we're going to try to wake her up. And so for a minute, they kept trying to wake her up. But she herself had to fight to get up. And she wasn't quite coming through on her own. So they had to keep her semi-sedated until she was able to gather enough strength to come up and out of it. But when she did, all I heard was the same mother that went in. She started demanding and she started controlling and she started what she ain't going to do and what she is going to do. And I'm not going to a rehab and I'm not this. And nevertheless, she went and she was in the hospital for a total of 52 days. A total of 52 days. And when they willed my mama out of there. I remember that day. We were all shouting. When they willed my mama up out of there. I'm trying to tell you, I was in heaven's gate. Amen. And then when I saw her stand up, 
because she had to learn how to walk again. Her speech was a little slurred, you know, and things like that. But now she is fully functional. She had a little something going on with her arm. But I said, I'll take that over her not being here. That's right. And so I just salute God for just, you know, breathing on my mom through COVID and through everything that we had to go through. I believe that it was because of God that I'm able to celebrate her on this Mother's Day. Because this time last year, this time last year, she was over there, but I got to go kiss her on her forehead today. So I'm absolutely happy to celebrate my mom today and on your broadcast. So thank you. I want to ask you something else because not only did your mom go in the hospital during this time um, and she was in the hospital, but you also became a grandmother. I did. I did. <laughs> uh, one fighting for life, the other one trying to give birth. I don't even. One pregnant. I don't know. But um, yes, I became a grandma um in December, December the third. My second daughter had another little girl. Her name is Brooklyn. Brooklyn in the house. <laughs> and so I had my second, my third, because I I'm a grandma of four biologically, and my oldest daughter just had her baby on my mom's birthday last week. So yeah. I am a fresh new grandma again. So I have a five month old and I have a Jeremiah who is only a week old. Wow. So I, I, I've, I've got some, some, some stuff that's happening in the pandemic. People was giving birth in the <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> Life was happening in this pandemic. Yeah, so I'm, I'm honored that, you know, what the devil thought was not going to happen in our family, not only were people able to live, but life was being brought forth. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm honored. I'm honored that God allowed us to see these days. It's been a blessing. Happy it's Mother's Day to your daughters. Yes, and happy um, Mother's Day. Shout out to my oldest, Najia Carter, <laughs> my little Jeremiah, yeah. and shout out to my second, LaShawn, and my little Brooklyn. And then God blessed me with some bonus children. Right. Um, my armor bearer um, who passed away, who, you know, left behind two amazing daughters and a son. And so that daughter gave birth. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Amen. And so I salute her, Ebony, who gave birth. Amen. To my, I call her my chocolate drop. So I salute them um, for keeping me young. They keeping me young. I don't look like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't look like somebody's GG. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, you know, the thing is, it's crazy is that, you know, I didn't know, like Tree said, I, I was listening to her speak uh, this morning. She said, man, I would have jumped right over, you know, childbirth. I would have went right back to grandparenthood, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, love, I love being a grandmother so much. It is the best thing since life. And I said to Lowe's, what's interesting for us is I don't remember the specifics about um, like, you know, the things that when my kids hit milestones, because you're so inundated with trying to work, trying to do this, trying to do that with your life, and you're trying to balance everything, that when they walk, you're just like, oh, good, they walked, let's move on to the next thing. <laughs> but with the grand, it's like, it's like a production of walking. And we're, we're, we're like, so because we can be a part of it the way we are, it's like a big event. And I'm like, wow, this is really cool, because I don't remember, you know, it, it being like this. The, the kids just walked. We were like, yeah, Michelle walked. Michelle was walking at nine months. I thought every kid was supposed to walk at nine months because <laughs> Michelle set the bar so high for everybody else. But truly, um, it's been a pleasure um, watching and enjoying Dakota. I tell people, anybody who knows me and has seen my Facebook page, has seen my grandson, for all those people that say they don't want their kids or grandkids on Facebook, they can forget it. My son in love says, if you want to see what my son looks like, go to my mother's Facebook page. <laughs> Listen, I blow Facebook up with my children. And I, I blow them up. Yes. And my daughter got me on halt right now because she won't let me post Jeremiah with his Chinese little self. But I'm waiting for his release because I'm going to post this baby because he is he's a gorgeous little somebody. And yes. so I'm like, she like, mom, don't post it. I'm like, listen and my mom my mom you know with with what she's gone she has now became a great grandmother of mm -hmm. many children during pandemic 
Mm-hmm. He has had more grandchildren being great grands being born. My mom, I had to write it down, uh, woman of God. I said, my mom got 13 grands. She has 13 and a half because I got one who's about to have a baby. She's got 13 and a half grand, great grands. But here's the thing. She ain't got but two biological kids. Wow. And I'm cheering. And these are us as cheering. Being, being fruitful and multiplying. The, this, the, 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 the earth. She she birthed the generation, two children, and she replenished. And she's look what God has done um, to the legacy to the legacy in her life. And and that's why in the message today, I am her. The her part of it was her children will rise up and call her blessed. I am her. I am the one that people calls blessed. And that's who your mom is. And so I remember. What the pandemic has done for the mothers, the older mothers in their 80s and the late 70s, is there. These are people that would have just bypassed the technological age. They would have had nothing. They could have been very happy living in their world of face to face contact, right? But the pandemic got them con- connected to technology, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And so now you're seeing people in their 80s and their 70s and, you know, on Facebook, on uh, on Instagram, on uh, Zoom, you know, doing things that they would have never, because years ago, you know, I remember when my mother-in-law, she would say, well, you know, we, we would say, let the kids come over and teach us how to do things, right? <laughs> but my mother-in-law, what she, my mother love, what she does is she has them write down on a piece of paper all her passwords that she keeps in a certain place (laughs) so she can go in. And when she first, we first got her an iPad and put her on Zoom, she said, I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm not going to get on Zoom. And she was just growling and fussing. Girl, the first time we got her on Zoom, she got on Zoom before everybody else talking about you late. (laughs) Where are you? You're supposed to be on early. She tell us off now because she's a, she's a Zoom expert. (laughs) <laughs> but but you know what? It did this to us, and it, and so now she can talk. We bought her a portal, so she can talk to my son in in L.A. and he calls her all the time, you know. And so you'd be surprised that some things that you know. And that's what I said today. Some things that man means for evil, you know, God and find we find some, you know, if you, the same people will find some good in. Right. We'll find a way. God will give us some good out of that thing, and so I'm grateful. Oh, you yeah. You pastor the church now for how many years? Talk about, uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, evangelism uh, on the move outreach ministry and what that has meant for you over the years and some of the things that you've probably been going through uh, during the pandemic. Um, Cause I know that faith in the marketplace, you know, right now a lot of churches have really struggled and suffered um, during the pandemic about, you know, being in the church home. Talk about, um, if you can, about, um, you know, evangelism on the move outreach ministry and and what you've done. I think you've just celebrated an anniversary in February. Ten years. Yes. Ten yes. years. Well, first of all, I thank God um, for my church. Um, I tell the church all the time that God is the pastor. I'm just the host. That's 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 how it is at my church. I'm just the host that helps bring people to Christ and get them motivated and activated. But God is the pastor of our church. Um, Evangelism on the Move Outreach Ministry was a birth in long before I ever became a pastor. I actually thought I love outreach. I love street ministry because I come from the street. And when I say I come from the street, meaning that I grew up in the hard knock life of the streets of Newark, New Jersey. And so I know what it is to run these streets. I know what it is to be about these streets, you know, out here trying to sell drugs, out here just being me, just doing the thing. And so um, because I love outreach and I love souls and I love people, I thought when God gave me that, it was just about, you know, um, going out here and, and, and talking to people and encouraging people. I never thought in a million years that it was for a church. I remember, um, a ministry that I was once a part of um, a while ago, I thought that, you know, being over the outreach team there, that it would be entitled the evangelism outreach um, team. And so God gave me that so long ago. And I have now been celebrating 10 years of pastoring that amazing church. Um, It has been a journey. It has been a journey, but it's a journey that I would not give back. It's a journey that I will not take down from. Um, 
one of the things during this pandemic, I must say, I've heard of, you know, some churches that have been struggling and that have been going through and, you know, even certain churches have closed or what have you. But I must be very honest with you, um, woman of God, elder. Um, my church have been extremely blessed. Uh, we were renting from a place in New York and I made an executive decision along with my pastor because everything I do and shout out to my pastor, my overseer, Apostle Jeffrey C. Woody, um, Newburgh, New York. Um, thank him for the covering. Thank him for pushing me always, you know, by my side, helping me, gearing me for the next. And I called my pastor and I just said to him what my heart felt. And I said, you know, pastor, if they're closing the buildings, I don't see why I should pay rent to a building I can't rent. I can't get into. And so I went before my church and we had a whole conversation about it. And they were in total agreement because I'm one of, I'm a firm believer. If you pay your tithes, you have a voice. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I went to my church and they were all in agreement. They was like, pastor, whatever you want to do. And so we decided that we would no longer rent in, in this space and in this place, because actually the type of ministry that evangelism on the move outreach is about, the name says it for itself. We outreach. We're going out to get them. We're going out to feed. We're going out to pull people. We're going out to encourage people. We're going out to lift people up from places that man don't think that they can ever come from. And so I said to them, you know, let's just stack the money. Let's, I would rather have my own building because I'm on a two hour limit. And the truth of the matter is I like to get in the dirt with people. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to stand there and say a two minute prayer over your life. I want to get in the dirt. If you dirty. I want to go down there and help you come out of that place. I want to, I want to be the one where the old church, you can say, I'll tarry with you. I'll, I'll get in the ground with you until you get your breakthrough. And I didn't have that type of time frame to really do that. And so I said, listen, we can save and get our own building. And I'm going to tell you the God honest truth. Our church have moved financially probably three cheers higher than we was in a building. Wow. I, I mean, the people have grown in their sowing. They have grown in their maturity in God. They have grown in their wealth in God. And I'm not talking about wealth of finance. I'm talking about the wealth of his glory. I'm talking about a church that you, you know, I have people from different walks of life that didn't even know that they could do the things that they're doing right now. And so God has been just favoring us. He's just been blessing us in this pandemic. God has really shown himself mighty to my ministry. He has shown himself awesome in everything that we have put our hands to do. God has blessed this ministry. And so it has been a blessing to sit at the feet of God, to hear God while the people work because they are working. They are diligent. They are committed to everything that God is placed at my hands. I can go to them and say, listen, da, 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 da. Now I can't sit here and tell you that every single person, cause you ain't gonna get every single person, you know, to, to do the right thing. But for the most part, everybody has come on board and done everything. And those that are still struggling with who they are and where they fit in, the thing I can say about them is that they haven't turned back. Amen. They might be still in waiting zone, but they haven't left. And as a matter of fact, we got new members during the pandemic. I didn't steal nobody's members. I didn't do Facebook Live. We did private Zooms. We did private Zooms. And I believe that God allowed us to do that because he wanted us to groom each other. I've poured more into my own church in this hour than I have ever. Because anybody that knows Pastor Woody, I'm a supporter. If you got something, I'm going to go. I'm going to be there. I'm going to help. I'm going to push. I'm going to, I'm going to. But I took this time to pour into my church. I took this time to build up my members. I took this time to help us to become stronger. And I'm grateful that I did it. Still got work to do, still got work to do. But for the most part, I salute that church and I salute every member because they are absolutely phenomenal. They are awesome. And so this pandemic was not a pandemic for my church. This was a pandemic. We've yeah. been planning our next move in God. We've been planning our strategic uh, walk in Christ. This has been a pandemic for us, not a pandemic. None of us have suffered. I thank God that none of us have lost our immediate families. We've lost loved ones, but our moms are still here. 
our dads are still here. Our children are still here. And so I salute them. I salute them. I honor them. I need them to hear it publicly. I honor the members of Evangelism on the Move for their diligence, their faithfulness to see this ministry through. When it could have crashed, I thank God that they continue to hold my arms up. Even the days that I couldn't even get to service, they continued on. They continued on in the service. And, and what I found out, Favor, that, that's been a blessing to me is that church has been so amazing. I, I, I remember preaching one Sunday. This is a true story. I remember preaching one Sunday. And when I looked on the Zoom, bodies was on the floor of their homes. Wow. Because God has entered into them. And I tell my church all the time, if you have to wait to praise God for people, you're looking for entertainment. Wow. Mm. You are entertainer. But at Evangelism on the Move, we ain't here to entertain you. We're here to glorify God. Amen. Amen. We're here to glorify God. And yeah. that's what it's about. The awesome. glory of God. Awesome. And, and so, I, you know, over this last, uh, well, last month in March, we... I had a number of uh, pastors on we were talking about is there more which is basically what you're talking about uh there is more and there is a supernatural uh manifestation of god in this pandemic and and moving forward i believe god wants to do more i right? believe that sometimes we we are we are in the way of more right and so sometimes you know god allows things things to happen, right? And, and and we have to be able to uh, adjust and cause he's right there with us. And and so we've been adjusting in this pandemic. And, and so one of the things, you know, I, I do believe that God wants us to experience him more and he wants us to experience him at another level. I believe and, and so as, Many of the pastors that I've had conversations with off offline and also on on the show, uh, we were talking about um, and this folk. One of my main focuses is seven spheres of influence. Uh, you, you probably can see it on the on the little thing there, yeah, dealing with religion or faith, relationship, you know, dealing with family, education, uh, government and law, uh, media sports, arts, entertainment, business, and finance. And, and so there's an adjustment. I, I think I sent something to you earlier. I don't know if you got a chance to listen to it. Maybe after you'll get a chance to, to listen to uh, Bill Winston and, okay. and his platform on faith and, and the marketplace. Um, because many of us, you know, you're a priest, right? You, you have a priest anointing, you're a pastor. <laughs> Yeah, we, we should all be priests that, you know, that, you know, we, we, we Jesus was a priest at the order of Melchizedek. And and so Jesus was the priest. He was a high priest and because he was concerned with the people, with the, people. the needs of the people. And so uh, the other side of it is that there are kings, you know, scripture, particularly in Revelation, said we are priests and kings. Mm -hmm. And and but yet, you know, we we carry. Sometimes we carry the priest and king's mindset or anointing, but there is a separate anointing of the priest and the king, right? And many of the churches, as we make this adjustment, uh, as we make this adjustment through this pandemic, right? And in the equipping, right, is is going to be equipped to go outside of our sphere of influence, and and many of the people in in our churches are gifted. And have purpose and assignment God has for them. Many of our churches don't have kings. We just have everybody thinks they're going to be a priest. Everybody thinks they're going to carry the vision, right? But yet we equip them to go in their sphere of influence because they are kings, right? And so the the marketplace ministry is become, becoming will become very powerful as you recruit, mm -hmm. right? You as you recruit, you know, it's the mindset I'm recruiting. Yeah, I want to get souls. Right, but there's some souls going to become who will come in into the priest, right, into that sphere of the church, and they're going right. to work the church. And there's going to be those who you're going to equip to go in another sphere of influence, right? That's going to become a king. That's how your resources come, mm. right? And and so 
the marketplace is business ministry. Right. Right. And 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 how, you know, resources and how you create a mind, a wealth mindset. Right. And I'm talking about money because, you know, Takes uh, money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, in order <laughs> to build, in order to build that church, in order to purchase mm -hmm. that church is going to take resources. Yeah. You know, and, and when I was the executive director of the Boys and Girls Club, I had to understand. Yeah, it was faith. I have faith. Right. But I needed resources. Right. So I needed people who, who was on the board who were nice and loved the community. But I also needed to find people who had capacity. That's good. Yeah. And so when you talk about the mission in marketplace um, and, and building a wealth, you know, total wealth was without your health. You can have all the money in the world. If you don't have the health. Right. Right. If you don't have if you don't have your mind, right, your soul. Right. So you want holistic health, wealth. Right. But we need resource. Need resource. You know somebody that got, you know somebody that I need to know to get to me to know them. What, <laughs> what is it that uh, Tyler Perry said? Get the getter while I gotta get the get to get the gotters or something like that. Yeah. So I gotta get to the getters that got the get and to get the money to get the wealth to get the building. I'm yeah, going out. Well, we got you. We got about three minutes, but here, here's, here's what I want to say to you: is that we, if we only think about the priest side of it. And we don't think about the king side of it. You will never get that wealth, right? And and so, uh, when you think about those and those souls that have no resource, right? You 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 go in to get them. They that you evangelize them. They're on the street corners. And I, what I want to say to you tonight, right? There are kings mm -hmm. who need Jesus too. Mm. Right. And so there are people in corporate spaces, people who own stuff, people who are looking right for somebody to come and witness to them. Right. Because they need saving too. the king needs saving. too, Right. That's right. When you save a king. He has nowhere to put his resource. Right. When you when you evangelize them and they come into your house, they're going to make that investment. Wow. They they provide the the provision for the vision. Amen. That's good right there. The provision for the vision. That's good. Mm -hmm. And it's a king and priest anointing. And Bill Winston, um, out of Chicago, uh, has the mission and marketplace. He has the book that's out um, on faith and the marketplace, and he's talking about this. And he has the uh, Joseph School of Business. Wow. You know, he owns a mall, publishing companies, you know, all these different things like that, because we think only on regards to the this priest side of it. Right. Yeah. So we don't have to have a poverty mindset because God cause mm -hmm. that favor that God that is given. He's right. He's also placed it on you. And in that point, God will send people to provide what you need because you're a woman of faith. So stay faithful, stay focused, mm -hmm. and watch God begin to do work. But put it in the vision and make it plain, right? Write the vision and make it plain because at some point it will come to fruition and they that see it shall run with it. And for such a time as this, it will come to pass. And so we just, we're, 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 we're praying for you, Pastor. And, okay. uh, and we're watching uh, what God does in your life. We thank you because you came to... To, to be transparent with us on the mm -hmm. on, on, awesome. on blueprint today. And I'm sure uh, Elder <laughs> Lowe's will probably find a way to get you back on at a later time. Uh, but we just well, love you. We, we need to have this discussion, right? We need to have this discussion okay. about the mission and the marketplace. I'm for it. Right. So I'm Listen, let me tell you something. I, I'm, I'm afraid of leaders who are not still teachable. I am still teachable. I'm ever learning. I'm ever learning. I'm always seeking for more knowledge and more understanding. And so I'm for it. Um, we can we can do it. I'm, I want the priest and the king. I'm going after the priest and the king. And so I'm grateful and I'm thankful that you guys let me on. And I just want to close with this um, thought because um, today I preach um, for my Mother's Day service. And the theme was my womb carries promises. 
Amen. Yes, it does. So I'm carrying kings and I'm carrying priests. And I'm supported by this one of them. And you were talking about the fruit and I saw that fruit and that thing was blessing me. And this is the acronym that came to me while you did that. Fruit. I'm favored. I'm radiant. I'm unique. I'm intelligent. I'm a teacher. Tremendously blessed. That's what I got out of your fruit. I thank you and I thank you and I salute you for having me come on your pod today. Oh, bless you. Pastor. For all that God has for you. This was awesome. Thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Happy Mother's Day. Go back in and finish it. It ain't over. Yes. And you can hang out in the, we can hang out in the waiting room for the, for the rest of the show. <laughs> okay. Okay. Love you. Love you. Wow, that was, great. that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we got another pop on guest. Oh, yeah, that's my uh, buddy. The Apostle Pepper. Pepper. Yes, my God. Pepper. God bless you. Good evening. God bless you. Did you get a chance to hear any of that? Yes, I did. I was enjoying it. You could have continued. <laughs> Well, we we are we are continuing. We continue with you. <laughs> I was enjoying. That was Pastor Woody. Yes. 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 I was Pastor. enjoying. Uh, yeah. So we want to jump right in it. We want to talk. It's Mother's Day. Happy, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Yes. Thank and you, my friends. Thank you for taking time out your busy schedule. I know because you got skills. You know you you be busy. <laughs> When your husband said, yeah, I think she could do it. I was like, what? Hold on. Time out. <laughs> I'm actually at my, I'm actually at my mother-in-law's house and I just stepped away, found a quiet space. I was like, oh, I was washing the dishes for her. And I said, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yes. man. Uh, Pastor Woody said, happy Mother's Day, Apostle. Yeah, happy, happy Mother's Day, Pastor Woody. God bless you, woman of God. <laughs> So talk to us a little bit about mom and, and that whole and Mother's Day and you know this whole experience. Wow. Well, first of all, good evening to you and to the entire audience on Blueprint to my friend Elder Patrice and to love you. you um, love you too, um, Elder Lowe's. God bless you both. I'm so appreciative of this opportunity particularly today. Um, so for me personally, Mother's Day, I have mixed emotions. Um, I enjoy Mother's Day. I've always enjoyed Mother's Day growing up and celebrating it uh, with my mom. And um, Sydney and I went to see her earlier. Uh, she's right now, she was um, had a medical setback this year. And uh, she, she was in the hospital and she's been transferred to a nursing home, short term rehab. So we went to see her. And then after that, we come up to and we are now with my mother in law, with Sydney's mom. And so I enjoy mothers. I enjoy the spirit of the mother. I enjoy um, the spirit of nurturing. Uh, whether the person is the biological mother or church mother or godmother. I enjoy seeing and benefiting from actually participating in the fruit. We're talking about fruit um, of the labor of motherhood. I think it's a beautiful thing. And I think it's one of the things uh, that God just skillfully blessed this world with. Uh, there is, is no love that really I mean, love period is a, is a wonderful thing, but the love of a parent is just incredible. And then there are some things that's indigenous to mothers as opposed to fathers and vice versa. And I think both entities are beautiful, but since today is Mother's Day, we talking about mothers. Um, now uh, that's the joyous side. Uh, the, the downside, and I have a heart for people that are going through a hard time on today, either they've lost their mom or they are separated from their mom or mothers are separated from their children. Uh, this morning, yesterday morning, every Saturday, I, 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 I take 
I set aside time for intercessory prayer. And I just was praying for all of the mothers that lost their children, particularly to violence and to untimely police violence. And, um, and so that weight was heavily on me and I was lifting up the, the Floyd family and I was lifting up Trayvon Martin's mom and I was lifting up the mother of Tamir Rice. And from a social perspective, I sometimes, you know, I feel the weight of that because I too, I lost my child. Um, and, and then I've, I've had several miscarriages um, and I was carrying triplets and I lost all three of my children. And I kept asking the doctor that I wasn't able to save one, not one of my, and, and my doctor and I have a very good relationship and he was in tears and it just happened to tell me. And it took me a long time to even get this free, to be able to talk about it. But I recognize now that God chose me to even have that encounter. The Bible says he will not put more on you than what you can bear. And so I was selected to be able to connect to that kind of pain, to then elevate um, and, and still live victoriously through it to be an example and to provide uh, kind of like be an epistle to be living hope for women like me who have encountered that. So now I give God praise because the time that I now have, I am able to participate in helping to develop so many other young people and so many other initiatives. And I'm still giving birth and I'm still developing and I'm still operating in the spirit of a mother as a pastor, as an educator, as a leader. And so motherhood is not just relegated to biology, but motherhood really is a spirit. And I think it needs to be treasured. And I think, and I hope that that brief testimony was encouraging to somebody that may be feeling down, whether you have biological children or not, you can still be utilized in that capacity if you simply have a nurturing heart. And there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of work in the marketplace for the spirit of a mother. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the scripture actually says, you know, in Isaiah 54, that the woman, that, that barren woman that did cry, cry, it says, it says, sing aloud and cry out. It's, mm -hmm. Larger tents, because there's larger tents and larger tents and tents, because there are going to mm -hmm. be children that are going to be running to and from. So I, I thank God because we need um, we need to understand, and I think sometimes we we look only to the woman that has had the child on Mother's Day, but there are so many other women who have raised the children, right? That other mm -hmm. women. I've made, have birth and and I talk mm -hmm. talk about you know in the in, I talked today I said you know in in Genesis when when Rachel had uh Joseph and Benjamin so she died right after Benjamin so somebody had to come in and raise those boys there was there was mm -hmm. somebody that had to step in uh which was a step mother to come in and so we've got to still make sure that you know that women are honored um you know who did not uh have birth but birth the life of the child right so you didn't birth the you didn't birth the child but you birthed in their life something powerful mm -hmm. you put something in them and so i thank god because right. i've watched ministry in you i've watched how you've loved young people you've put young people together to to, to marry to do <laughs> you you put people you've seen yeah. things and, and, and I've watched, I've watched you and, and how much you love uh, young people. You put things together in your church that bring young people to your church, you know, comedy, you know, comedy shows and all kinds <laughs> of things because you reach out into the hearts of people. You see things other people don't, you know, and I wanted to say, you know, to you, um, you know, I'm praying for your mom, um, yeah. uh, just another, um, just a beautiful woman. 
Uh, funny, I always remember what I remember about your mom is that your mom, she, she always said one thing she couldn't, she didn't like. She said, you know how people say, turn to your neighbor and say, you know, she was like, don't say turn to your neighbor. So I, when I came there to speak, I was afraid to say it. She, she puts it out there. She keeps it real. I love it. I love it. You know, so I thank God for her and I'm praying for her divine. Y'all pray for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I want to say too, yeah, that I want to thank you for being so transparent because mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I don't know who's listening. You never know who's listening. And you know, we get viewers right. tonight and and we'll keep getting viewers. It's on Facebook Live. So we'll just keep mm -hmm. getting viewers. Look at you know, look every now and then and it just keeps rising. So you you never know mm -hmm. who to be blessed. And I, I didn't drop my um I usually have my it's my pebble. my pebble, which is a rock or it was a basketball, but I got it right here. Okay. Right? See, I got it right here. I'm gonna drop it in the pond, right? I drop okay. it, I usually have a pebble in the pond because I want a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. Right. And, there you and go. so many people need there you to go. hear what you just what you just mm -hmm. said. And and because yes. people are going through, you know, not just That's the pandemic. Right. Even before the mm -hmm. pandemic, people were going through. Before. So That's I right. thank you for your transparency, and and hopefully someone out there hears it and 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 will be able to share it, right? Even if it's not happening to them, you know, some they may run into somebody divinely, somebody, you, somebody right. who's going through or just lost someone, just yeah, lost my, the baby. My friend, my friend Nadine. Mm -hmm. My friend Nadine, her daughter was shot and killed in December of 2016. It was her only child. Right. And so gun violence. Right. She was, you know, just coming home from a basketball game. And so Mother's Day for her, it, you know, goes back to your 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 your, your point about how, you know, how people mm -hmm. feel. You know, um, I, I was when I was at my sister's church, the, the, the young boy, there was a young boy a couple of years ago who was hit by a car and his birthday was yesterday. He was a young kid. And 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 so his for his mom, too, you know, you think about, you know, it's Mother's Day and you should be celebrating what things are going on with your kids and and those are the kind of things that we have to be transparent about. And we have to let those individuals know that it's okay to feel what you feel. You know, it's okay Correct. to feel that. And, and that there's no right or wrong. And all we can do is love on them as much as possible. Love on them because we don't know, um, you know, what people are going through. And so I see our pastor Woody talked about her daughter having a miscarriage and, but she brought life in two, 2021, but we thank God for that. But people have gone through so many different things. And so I thank God for your testimony. Um, but you know, I, I think I saw something that pastor Woody said that your womb continues to be filled with ministry and what you birthed. And we thank God for your mm -hmm. ministry and, and, yeah. and, the, and, mm -hmm. and your pastorship and your leadership in in Long Island. <laughs> Talk about yes. your history. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So um you know and and talking about this and not even realizing it just talking with the two of you um and just really feeling at home um cuz I'm talking to my friends and when you're in a safe place that sets a great backdrop for great ministry. And so in talking about my ministry, the reason why what you just said, um, um, Elder P, was very significant. So I started my church in 2015. Next week, well, in two weeks, uh, rather, we will be celebrating six years in ministry. Right. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm so grateful, so grateful. Um, it's it's a still a young church, you know, it's particularly in comparison to ministries that have been around for a hundred years and that kind of thing. But the six year mark is very significant for us because so there were quite a few people that weren't as happy as me, as you were, uh, you know, and, and came out and said, "You're not going to make it a year." So when you get this far against naysayers. It has a, a very sweet taste of victory. However, in speaking about this particular issue, we started in May of 2015. In September, um, 
uh, Pastor Sid and I, uh, we had gone to a conference to in um, Cleveland. And that's where I had, I did not know I was pregnant. Mm. Mm. And so we had only been a church, but May, June, July, August, we had only been a ministry for four months. And when we got to the fifth month, we went to the conference. We flew to Cleveland. We got to Cleveland. And at the conference, there was a pastoral leadership conference. I miscarried our child. And I was moving so slow in the morning. Um, Sydney had said, I'm going to go ahead downstairs and secure our seats. And I could not explain to him why I was dragging. He thought that I was just lethargic and just causing him to be late. But I really did not feel well and I couldn't put my finger on it. And so I was he left to go downstairs in the hotel to secure our seats. And I was alone in our hotel room in a strange city at a leadership conference. Mm. And I had this horrible thing happen to me in the hotel bathroom mm. in, in, the ba in the bathroom in our room. And I took so long that he just felt to come back upstairs. I was in, I was traumatized that I, I had the fetus, I had everything and just seeing it, I was shell shocked. And when he came in the bathroom, he didn't know, but he stepped up. And I believe a part of it was his training, um, you know, by him being a former firefighter and particularly in 9-11, he is accustomed to dealing with, you know, mm -hmm. extraneous circumstances. And I think that his skill kicked in. But then after him realizing he that's his child too. And we can to come back and we had started the ministry having monthly services. The very next day was the day of our service. That was a uh, Friday, that Saturday I had to rest. That Saturday night we were on a plane back to New York. I had to preach that Sunday because we had just opened Destiny House. And mm. I preached for that service and got the church through. And I was going home and saying, God, I'm at the beginning of our ministry. I've just lost a child. I had to be hospitalized that week after um, to just treat me. And I'm in the middle of trying to get a church on the ground. Mm -hmm. And so nobody knew but he and I and one other person what we were going through at the start of the ministry. So to be here six years, getting ready to celebrate six years and going back, and having to, and then talking about Mother's Day and tying it all in, I just want to encourage one of the things that uh, the 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 assignments on my life and the assignment on the Destiny House Christian Center is summed up in our tagline: "We will get you where you need to go, riding on the Word of God." And I'm very deliberate and very skillful in helping to develop what other people have been called to do and then providing a platform for them to exercising their gift so that they grow in it and be, get to the level of mastery and they can skillfully work either in a traditional sense in what we know in the world of Ecclesia or within the fulfillment of their life's divine destiny in marketplace. And all of that tenacity would not have been there and that strength to do it if I myself had not encountered some very challenging um, um, and difficult times to have to now live through it to become an example, to exemplify God and to show them don't ignore your pain but sometimes you will be in a situation where you have to serve while you're bleeding because God has called you for that time and that purpose. 
and it is so necessary to get it done, you have to trust him even when you can't trace him. And when it is your moment to have that intimate time to get the healing that you need to continue, he will provide it. But there are some things that still can't stop because God's timing is just doesn't always align with ours. But if he called you to it, he will equip you and somehow get you through it. And so that was my, that's my story, my ministry. I know God's hand is on it. And I am the proud senior pastor of the Destiny House Christian Center located in Freeport, New York. And I'm so grateful that God has chosen me to now mother the church that I have. I love my congregants. I love my leaders. But more importantly, I love serving um, the community. And I genuinely have a heart for people. And I'm just grateful to be in this position to do what God is saying to do. Awesome. Yeah. Yes, yes. Awesome. And and uh, would you clearly understand when we say mission and marketplace? And, yes. Uh, yes. You know, and I, I I knew that when when Tree said, "Well, you know, call um, Pastor Pepper." You know, call <laughs> <laughs> that's my girl. That's you right. Said, Tech Sydney. I, okay, I'm gonna oh, text. he's on. He's on. He said, "Amen." <laughs> and, and, and then I, you know, I got to thinking, like, uh, yeah, we went there for the comedy show. You yes, know, you did. thinking outside the box. I mean, mm -hmm. ministry is more than just, you know, just the church, right? We we That's have right. to understand that. And I love it that you say, "I'm equipping whether or not they're coming in, into this." sphere you're in in regards to the priest anointing and yes. doing the ministry of the church but if not we want to prepare them to go do whatever god's assignment is for them correct you know, going to that sphere of influence and have an impact there as well and That's and then right. also to nurture them yes to get to that point which is which is uh, which is awesome which is what you know uh you know faith in the marketplace is yes you yes. know, you would when you were talking when you were talking to Pastor Woody. I just wanted to get this in, um, I, in the interest of time. I don't, <clears throat> I didn't want to belabor it, but I wanted to say this. It was very um, encouraging. First of all, just your title, but the pastor's job is to handle the vision, and I tell this to my leaders all the time. If you are called to be the senior pastor, whether you took over a church or whether you are starting it from scratch, your job is to handle the vision of the house. You, at the beginning, you might be inundated with a litany of other things, but eventually the pastor needs to look to start to delegate those duties so that that individual can focus on the vision. The job of the leaders and the legacy is to handle the mission. And when you handle the mission, the a part the visionary has to understand that you cannot equip people with the ideology that you need to hold them for yourself. Mm. You need you have to be so selfless and so trusting in God and really live out that scripture to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding with the expectation that they may leave you. They may leave you in error or they may leave you because it's a part of God's will. But for mm. whatever time frame that you are there, just like a parent, we look at our children, right? We are not raising children. We are raising adults. They're mm. in the stage of a child. But eventually the goal is to get that person to be independent, not to be interdependent for the rest of their lives. That's right. And so yeah. if, if you raise your kid with the mindset to always need you when you're not there, they can't stand. It's the same thing in the spirit. That person ha may have a ministry and God may have you to be the one to pour into them, to develop them for the sake of advancing them wherever he has said they need to go. Awesome. Yeah. And you cannot make a person feel guilty 
that they owe you anything, that they got to stay because you poured into them. You're making an investment and you have to trust that God will make the return. Lord, that's beautiful. Awesome, man. I, every week, man, I, you know, I always say that uh, I always make this statement. My my grandfather, when I was little, he said, come here, boy, I got I got a nugget for you like that. And I'm like, man, I'm looking, where is this nugget at? You know, <laughs> and he would say <laughs> and he would say something to me every week. I'm, I'm still looking for the nugget, but I mean, you know, uh, and, and then there's a commercial with uh, Damon Lillard. He's an NBA basketball player. He does the commercial dropping dimes. Right. And uh -huh. you. You and Pastor Woody dropped some nuggets and some dimes tonight, and I, and I appreciate you for it. <laughs> I, mean, I want to just add something, too, and that is this. Elder Lowe's always says, and he's gotten it from some other people, but he says, if you're the smartest person in the room, get a new room. And, and sometimes right. in leadership, um, it's trying to bring people on that may be smarter to challenge so That's that they right. can take your vision and sometimes they can take your vision farther than what you even thought right because you actually bring people in that can manifest and, and sometimes that's why it says that's why the scripture says write the vision and make it plain that they who read it might run with it right mm -hmm. that's right that if you don't write it and make it plain you know you want your people to read it and they need to run and take it to another level and that's sometimes right. As, as leaders, we will hold people back from running with the same vision that we gave them because they may take it further than what we envision, mm -hmm. and that's a threat. Nice. And so we've got to come back and say, is this what God envisioned um, that we could take it? And so I imagine that when 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 Bishop Jake started with 12 people, he started mm -hmm. with working people or 14 right. working people, and he gave them assignments under which, and mm -hmm. then they manifested the vision with their assignments and took it to another level. So I thank God for what he's doing to you and to Pastor Woody, I, you know, 10 years and six years and whatever it is, I'm grateful because I think I was at the beginning of your connection. So <laughs> at the beginning of you and at the beginning of Pastor Woody when you both first started your ministries. And, you know, and I'm grateful that I'm mm -hmm. still connected to you guys as friends and sisters. I love you, and um, you know, may your may the rest of your Mother's Day with your with your mother-in-law and and your family be blessed. And you know, I love you. Yeah, yes, no. love you both. Later. Love you too. This has been awesome. <laughs> we got to get together. Yeah, tell yeah, my absolutely. man. Tell my man, Sydney. I said, "What's up?" I you sure know. will. I sure will. We here with my mother-in-law, Annette, our, our aunt Jackie, and we're gonna continue. We're gonna continue with dessert. Um, but happy Mother's Day to you, Elder Patrice, and um, and to your lovely daughter. I'm just seeing God just bless you both. Yes. And uh, you just keep your, your family's awesome. And uh, we, we love you guys. You you are awesome. You the two, Both of you. You're just awesome. Thank you. Appreciate Thank that, Pastor. You. Thank you for taking the time out. Go back to enjoying your family. And we do appreciate your time. Uh, and we love you. And, and love God you bless you. God so bless you. Happy Mother's Day to all your listeners. Thank you. Um, I want to say good evening. I want to say uh, in closing, man, thank you for your support this evening. Uh, and I want to say again, happy Mother Day, Mother's Day to all the mothers. Right? We love you. We'll be praying for you. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the week. And I'm going to look forward to you next week as I have Adam Connors on. And we're going to talk a little bit more about way wealth, right? The mission, the marketplace. And he's the one of the best uh, networking gurus out there. And it's going to be an awesome evening. Enjoy the rest of the week, right? And remember, Mother's Day is every day. So bless your mother every single day. God bless you and good night. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Lowe's More, The Blueprint Podcast. Stay connected and follow us at our website, www.lowesmore.com. That's L-O-W-E-S-M-O-O-R-E.com. You can also join the discussion on Twitter at Lowe's More and on Facebook at Lowe's More Jr. As always, thank you for pushing your mindset towards a better reality. This concludes the most thought-provoking portion of your day. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast to stay fully up to date with everything we're up to. Until next time, be kind to yourself and each other. With the kitchen is a joke, I ain't buying it like I'm broke. It's a-